Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to the finest of the week community church. We greet you in the precious name of Jesus. We are so happy and excited that you have decided to tune in to our morning worship service. Let us encourage you with a very familiar passage of scripture. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We know God has something wonderful and something good for you today in our morning service. If you're joining us by way of Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram, please share, like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in giving to this ministry, we have three easy ways for your convenience. There's Cash App. Simply type in dollar sign TFWCC. You can also give at Givelify. In the search bar, type in the Finest of the Week Community Church. And lastly, you can give at our website. Type in www.tfwcc.org backslash give and tap on the square. Now it's time for our morning worship service. But before we go there, go grab, grab your kids. Go grab your husband, your wife, your friend, a neighbor. And let them share in the good news of Jesus Christ. God bless you.
we glorify you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Lord, you are good. And your mercy endureth forever. One more time. Lord, you are good. And your mercy endureth forever. Amen. Praise the Lord with us on today.
more than anything. Anybody love them this morning? Anybody can't make it without them? Can't see yourself being without God? I don't know how I lived before I got saved without the love of God. But I'm so glad that he loves me. There was a song the mothers used to sing when I was a child. I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why he cares. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. But is there anybody in the building this morning that can say that I'm glad that he did? I'm glad that he did. We thank God for his goodness, for his mercy. Thank God for all of you that are here. Amen. Do me a favor, one more time, let's honor our pastor, Suffering Bishop Carolyn L. Striglers. Amen, I thank you for loving on her. Amen, I thank you for taking care of your pastor. Amen, I'll be honest and transparent this morning. I, was, uh, I, I know I have a word from God this morning because the devil did all he could to try to stop me from getting here. Got home late last night trying to get the broadcast done. It was about 1.30. I said, that's not happening. I went to sleep, got up, and broadcast still didn't work. I had to upload it twice. I was running late, trying to get here in time for Sunday school. Couldn't find the dress shoes that I needed. Found some tennis shoes and said, the pastor's just going to deal with it this morning. Uh, she can yell at me later. I got to church, tried to set up. The internet wasn't working. On the phone with Spectrum back and forth trying to get them to send a technician out. Uh, I never usually preach with notes. Most nine times out of 10, I don't have notes when I preach. Decided to get my life together and put some notes out and couldn't even print them. Uh, but God is good and I find no fault in him. And I believe he has a word for us this morning. It's a lesson to me and a lesson to all of us that anytime you encounter resistance, that's really not the time to get upset uh, that's the time to give God praise because you know you have something real because the devil's trying all he can to stop it. And for some of you who barely made it to church this morning because of all that's going on, all that's happening, all the heartbreak, all the finances, all the issues, all the, all the stuff, I know where the stuff is coming from. We are not ignorant of Satan's devices, but I'm so glad the Bible says that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And some of us ought to just give God praise that he let us get here one more time. That he gave us the power. Find somebody and tell them something good's gonna happen today. Look at somebody else like you mean it. That was the wrong neighbor. Tell them something good's gonna happen today. How do I know it? Because I got here in spite of the hell that I went through. So I'm not leaving here without a blessing. I'm not leaving here without a breakthrough. I'm not leaving here without what God has for me. Join me this morning in the book of Ephesians, chapter number one. Ephesians chapter number one. I'll read in your hearing, <clears throat> beginning at verse 15. This is Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, and he says in verse number 15, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Tell somebody I gotta get to know him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him up from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion 
and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, God. We thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people one more time. God, I'm a flawed vessel, but you're a perfect God with the perfect word. Move me out of the way this morning. Speak to the hearts and minds of your people. Anoint my mind, word my mouth. Make my pen as that of the ready writer. Speak to your people. Saturate this place in your anointing, God. God, an extraordinary anointing. Let your Shekinah race rest in this place today. God, change lives today. Break yokes today. Mend hearts today. God, fix finances today. Heal bodies today. We trust you to do it, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, you may have your seats. Verse number 19 says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, word, who believe according to the working of his mighty power? If we skip down to verse number 22, the Bible says, that he hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. I'm gonna attempt to preach in the style of my mama this morning. Uh, in honor of her birthday, I didn't realize at the time he, that it would coincide that way, but God knew. And if you notice, oftentimes, and I hope ministers that you pay attention, that our pastor will typically give her topic in three parts. She'll give us a theme, a subject, and then she'll write a title. So this morning from those scriptures, I want to talk about power. Power. For a subject walking in God's power, walking in God's power. Do me a favor, just find somebody like eye, lock eyes with them and look at them like you're angry at them and tell them it's under my feet. That was too quiet. Look at somebody else. Tell them it's under my feet. It's under my feet. I'll start by saying that when it comes to the question of why we struggle to believe God, and yes, that's what I said, and yes, that's what I meant, oftentimes the fact of the matter is, is that we struggle to believe God. Uh, some of us are striving to rise to the occasion of the disciples, or rather as the Father, I'm mixing up the story, but who said, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. Uh, it would be one thing if we were there, but some of us struggle. Let me put it on me. Sometimes I struggle to believe God. It's not a question oftentimes that God can do it. We know that he can. We know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of thereof. We know that all things belong to him. All things consist and exist because of him. We know he has the power. So that really isn't the question. It isn't a matter of whether God can do it. The question for many of us and the source of much of our unbelief is whether God will do it. Uh, oftentimes we struggle with our own deep-seated feelings of unworthiness because nobody knows you like you know you. We come to church and we dress up, we play the part, we say praise the Lord, we quicken when it's necessary, we know how to dance in time, we know how to clap on the 2-4, we know how to do church. 
And, and, and oftentimes, even in church, uh, we, we wear masks for our brothers and sisters because what we portray on the outside isn't really what we're feeling on the inside. And more than that, uh, we don't really do testimony service anymore, but when we do testimony service, we, we make sure that we edit down our testimonies. We don't always tell it all. Uh, we, don't, we don't really go uh, uh, and, and discuss all that God has done for us, all that he has delivered us from. Uh, because the fact of the matter is that we've all done some things that we are deeply ashamed of since we've been saved. Uh, we've all done some things and had some thoughts uh, and, and said some things and, and intended some things that that we don't want anybody to know about. If we could hide them from God and we try to, we would, but we know that God knows. So if God knows, we can't do anything about that, but we do everything that we can to make sure nobody else knows. Uh, but oftentimes it's that God knowing part that stops us because we know that as much as we know ourselves, the one person who knows us better is God. And when it comes to a question of what God will do for me, when it comes to the question of whether God will help me, whether he will deliver me, my mind automatically goes to all the things that I have done against him. And thank God that God is not like us because oftentimes we put ourselves in God's position and we say, well, if I was God, I certainly wouldn't help you. And because we project oftentimes our feelings, our emotions, our dispositions onto God, which we should never do, we question whether or not he will do it for us. Tell somebody he'll do it for you. Uh, but 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 we 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 look at others. Uh, we believe God for others. Isn't that interesting? Uh, because we don't really know their story. We know ours. And to us, they look righteous. They look the part. And so we'll say, well, God is going to do it for them because of what they do. Failing to recall in the Bible where God says that all of your righteousness, uh, on your best day, it's as filthy rags. On, on your best day, you don't rise to the level of salvation needed to save your life. If you could do it, you'd be here. I had to come to do what you could not do. Uh, none of us is good. None of us deserves to be here. None of us deserves for God to say, can take a second look at us. Uh, and it's that understanding the knowledge of who we are what we've done and where we come from that causes us to question what God has in terms of our future and what he'll do in terms of protecting securing and rescuing us uh, the unsettling of our mind uh, also uh, uh, tends to come from a place uh, uh, where we question God's motivations we question God's actions. It comes from a failure to understand, and just stay with me for a few moments, we'll get through here. It comes from a failure to understand who he really is and what he's all about. I said earlier, just a few minutes ago, that we project our own minds, our own intentions on God. Uh, again, failing to recall in the Bible where he says that your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are are not my thoughts. As far as the heavens are from the earth, that doesn't even begin to describe the gulf between the way that you think and the way that God thinks. Uh, we, 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 we know, we understand that he is God. We understand that he is the creator of the universe, that he is the omnipresent God, that he's everywhere at the same time, that he is the omniscient God, that he knows all things, that he has all knowledge, that he is the omnipotent God, that he is all powerful. He can do anything and everything we, that he wants. We don't question his sovereignty, uh, but in light of his power, in light of those exclusive attributes that make him God uh, and our failure to understand what motivates his actions, we often uh, conclude that we're going to fall on the wrong side of that action. Uh, we often feel that we're going to come down on the side of judgment. We often feel uh, because of what we've done that we've been excluded from God's plan, from his purposes, as, as if he didn't know what you were going to do before you got here. Uh, 
as if he didn't know uh, before he formed you, as Jeremiah said in your mother's womb, that, that, that you would mess up time and time again. But oftentimes we think that God's always going to come down with a hammer, that because of what I've done, uh, I, I am precluded now from the blessings of God. Uh, we remember those omnis, but there's other omnis, and, and you won't find any of those words in the Bible. Those are Latin words that, that we attribute to God and his attributes. But but in addition to being all-knowing, and in addition to being all uh, everywhere at the same time, in addition to being uh, all-powerful, uh, he is omnibenevolent. He is omnibenevolent. He is the God that is all-loving. And I'm so glad that I serve a God that is love-forward. I, I wish somebody could celebrate with me that I serve a God that, that, that loves tempers all of his actions that yeah he's got the power and he has the power to wipe you out uh, without thinking about it but I'm so glad that love steps in front of his ability to do that when I when I deserve to die when I deserve not to make it I'm so glad that love stepped in between me and his judgment I'm so glad uh, the song used to say that love lifted me when nothing else could help I'm so glad that God's love uh, lifts me up and keeps me up and keeps me going It is God's love that is behind his actions. It is God's love that is the source uh, 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 of his motivation. It is is God's love uh, that, 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 that dictates any interaction that he has with us. It's always his love first. So when Paul says in our text that, 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 uh, it, it is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. I uh, know that intrinsic in that statement is his love that is also commended to us. To somebody who can't do anything about God's love. Uh, he loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. He, he, he cares about you and there's nothing that you can do about it. And, and, and when he extends his power to you, it's extending it not in judgment, not in wrath oftentimes, but in love. Uh, He demonstrates, uh, or rather he demonstrated uh, the ultimate act of love. Paul says this, uh, uh, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us were to believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he uh, shows to us, which he demonstrated to us when in Christ he raised him up from the dead and set him down in heavenly places. And when we look at the crucifixion story, it should be clear to us that God loves us. And I know we say that because we know how to do church and we know uh, that that's the right response. But I, but I question whether we really understand the magnitude to which God loves us. Uh, everything he does for us uh, can be traced back and rest on that single action. Uh, everything that he he thinks about us can be traced back to his love and his love uh, was most clearly demonstrated when he gave uh, his life for us. Uh, Oftentimes uh, we ask the question uh, with uh, respect to the resurrection, but rather with respect to the crucifixion, uh, it's popular to ask uh, if he had the power. Since he is omnipotent, since he is uh, able to do what he wants to do, uh, why didn't he uh, uh, detach himself from that cross uh, and come down? Uh, we ask that all the time, and we, we are quick to respond that it was because of his love. And, and while I think that's the correct response, I think it's the correct response to the wrong question. Uh, I was the kind of child who thought too much and always got in trouble. I was never really uh, wondering why God didn't take himself off of the cross. To me, uh, that was clear uh, when he was in the garden and they came and to uh, arrest him. And the Bible says that when they came and tried to put their hands on him, that the power of God was so great that they all fell back. Uh, the fact that he got up, the fact that he allowed them rather to get up, uh, lets me know that the God who does not change his mind, who was not double minded, uh, then and there committed and was resigned to his fate. There was no matter uh, of getting to the cross. If he didn't want to go to the cross, he wouldn't have gotten there in the first place. So to me, the question isn't why he didn't come down off the cross. The question to me is why there had to be a cross in the first place. exactly the response I wanted why God did there have to be a cross it's clear if you read in the earlier chapters that he did not want to go to the cross how do I know this because the Bible says he 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 he, on his knees with blood dropping sweat dropping like blood from his brow prayed several times father if it be possible Let this cup pass from me. 
So then I ask God, why the cup? Because the fact of the matter is that it is possible, or rather it was possible. And I know I'm about to get in trouble with a whole lot of you right here. Just put your seatbelts on. The fact of the matter is that it was possible. Why do you say that, Jerry? The Bible says with man, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. There are no limits to possibilities with God. So Jesus is not asking this question errantly. He said, if it be possible, knowing who he was talking to, it was possible. So then I asked God if it was possible for there not to be a cross, then why the cross? Scholars and theologians will say, well, and, and rightly quote the scriptures, well, without uh, the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. You see this types and shadows in the Old Testament, all throughout the Old Testament, especially our, our pastor deals oftentimes with the tabernacle. And you see the tabernacle being a pattern, not just of the Christ, but of uh, his crucifixion and the sacrifice. And, and, and they'll argue, well, it had to be this way. And I'll counter really quickly. Well, God set the pattern. God dictated the cost. The price for sin was blood. God set that price. So again, I asked the question, God, why the cross? The fact is, is that God could have chosen another way to save us if that's what he really wanted to do. God in his infinite, I love how quiet it is, God in his infinite wisdom, in his infinite knowledge, in his, his, his monumental creativity, could have figured out some other way. Could have set the price. Nobody, he answers to nobody. Nobody controls him. He could have said whatever he wanted to do. Saved himself some stripes on his back. He didn't have to go through like he went through. He could have decided to do it differently. From the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. But before the foundation of the world were made, because he set the foundations, he existed. He slayed the lamb. So he didn't have to do that. So the question is why? Why God... Would you have a cross if you had the power to eradicate the cost altogether, eradicate the suffering altogether? And I'll leave you all because I feel like some of y'all, your blood pressure is raising and you're trying to figure out where I'm going with this. And I feel pastor behind me saying, you better fix it real fast. But I would argue that the reason there had to be a cross is the simple scripture in the Bible, which God himself said, and he's the God of all knowledge. He said this, greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. There had to be a cross to prove singularly to you and to me that the greatest love of all is the love that he has for us. And beyond that, the scripture says this, and this is where we really get into trouble because it says, greater love than have no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. But we weren't his friends. We were enemies of God. We, there was enmity between us and God. But God looked through that, looked past the sin and said on his own dime, on his decision, uh, I see Jerry, I see Wendy, I see Tabula, I see Rhonda, and I want to be friend, God help me today, with them. I wish somebody could celebrate the fact we sing the song today, I am a friend of God, but the only reason you're friends of God is because he wanted to be your friend in the first place. You, you weren't his friend, you were his enemy, but he said, I've got to do what I've got to do to show you how much I love you. I, I want to be friends with you that badly. I want to be in relationship with you that badly that I, I'll set the ultimate sacrifice. I, I'll set it up that, that so it's so great so that there's no question in your mind how much I love you, how, how much I care about you, how much I'm willing to suffer for you. What is it that I won't do for you? I, I've given you everything I've got, everything I had. I laid it on the line for you. I, I made it so you could walk in victory. I took the punishment so that you could live an everlasting life. Somebody give God praise that he's my friend. 
Come on, you can do better than that. Somebody ought to give God praise that he, I can say he's my friend this morning. I can say that I'm buddies with God. I, I can call him by his name because he is my friend. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Why? Because he's my friend. Which raises the question now. What is it? God won't do for his friends. The question of whether he can is a moot point. We know he can. The question is, will he? And God is saying to us this morning, what else do I have to do to prove to you? What else do I have to do to show you? I already said it's my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I told you, ask me the question, what is it that's too hard for me? Ask me, see, won't I do it? See, won't I handle it? See, we tell our friends secrets. And some of us, we don't have really good friends. We want to tell them some secrets. Uh, some of us, we have best friends that, that will tell most secrets too. But God knows all our secrets before he ever got there. And, and knew our secrets before we ever got here. And said, I still want to be your friend. And if I am your friend, then I, I, I want to see. See, real friends don't want to see friends suffer. God help me today. Uh, some of us need to check our friend group because we don't really have real friends. We, some of us need to look around because friends aren't jealous of one another. Friends aren't trying to step in front of one another. Sit, friends, don't look at your blessing and get mad and wonder where is mine. Friends uh, will push you and pick you up when you're down. Friends will tell you the truth that you need to get your life together. Friends aren't worried about your feelings. They'll, they'll do what they have to do to get you in the right spot. Why? Because they want to see you succeed. Well, Bible says that, that he came and died for his friends. Why? So that they could have life and have life more abundantly. He died so that I would be the head and not the tail. That I would be above and not beneath. So I would be the lender and not the borrower. He came so that I could be successful. He came so that I would have life. Tell somebody I'm his friend. The Bible says he hung there. Let him pick, pluck rather, the hair from his beard. Let them crush a crown of thorns in his head. Let him beat them all night long. He suffered, bled, died, hung on that cross, gave up the ghost, and even there he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I'm so glad he forgave me when I, I didn't know what I was doing. But can I tell you this? I'm even more glad he gave, forgave me when I knew what I was doing. Because there are some times when I knew was I, when I was messing. There are sins of omission. There are sins of commission. But, but there are some transgressions. Transgr transgressions know, mean that you, you know exactly what you're doing and you decided to do it anyway. Uh, some of us have gotten up and then just said, I'm just not doing God today. I'm just not dealing with it. I'm, I'm going to tell this person exactly what I think about them and whatever language, not heavenly, that I choose uh, to speak about it. But I'm so glad that even when I transgressed, even when I messed up, that, that his love still stepped in front of me and his judgment he says I, I can't kill him because he's my friend and God is saying I'm your friend I want you to succeed I I'm your friend I want you to prosper I'm your friend it hurts me to see you hurt I hate to see you cry I hate to see you suffer I'm so much your friend that I, I said, I how many friends do you have that would take a whooping for you? I need to go back and do a census of my childhood and see who, who knows the real Carolyn Stricklers and how she could handle and wield a belt, an ironing cord, a rod, a switch. And see, would step in front of that for me. Because that's a real friend. God said, I, I stepped in front of it all. 
for you, I let them kill me. I let them. I, I laid down my life because no man could take it. I, I laid it down for you. Laid it down with the power to know that I could pick it back up. And I'm so glad that three days later, he did just that, picked himself back up. The Bible says, with all power in my hand. And Paul is saying that that power is now uh, uh, pointed at you to us word. Tell somebody that power is for me. Why did he get up to give me the power to walk in his authority, to give me the power to walk in his might, to give me the power to walk in his strength? It's not by power. It's not by might. It's not by, uh, it's by God's spirit that I'm here. It's by God's spirit that I'm going to tell somebody I'm going to make it because I've got the power. I, I've got the authority now. Who gave it to me? God gave me the power. I don't have to suffer i don't have to go through what i'm going through god gave me the power to get myself if god raised jesus from the dead and he did that for me then he's gonna raise me up tell somebody god is about to pick me up i know it looks bad right now i know it looks dark right now but god is getting ready to lift me up i was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore but i'm so glad the master reached out his hand and love lifted me and it's not just gonna lift me here but it's gonna take me where he wants me to go i wish somebody would give god praise that he gave you the power to make it tell somebody i got the power to make it I got the power to pick myself up. I got the power to deal with these fools on the job. I, I got the power to make what God gave me. Picked himself up. With all power. The power wasn't for him. He had it anyway. Tell somebody that power is for you. That power is for me. So if Jesus is my friend, and I already know because he is my friend that he can do it, and he proved to me on the cross before I even got here that if he's willing to do that, he's willing to do anything. So he will do it. He can do it. He will do it. He picked himself back up and come, came back with the power, so I know he, 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 he gives me now the power to handle it. And yet still I'm walking around here like I can't take nothing. Like I'm not going to make it. Like I won't survive. The devil is a survivor. I mean, the devil is a liar. God made survivors. Until somebody, I'm not just surviving, I'm going to thrive. Uh, I had tell somebody he gave me power. I, I, I wish I could move from that, but, but does anybody have power this morning? The Bible says that, that after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you will receive. Anybody got the Holy Ghost this morning? I tell somebody your friend gave that to you. Your, your friend made sure you got the Holy Ghost. And, and since you got the Holy Ghost, you can walk through here with your head held high. It doesn't matter what comes against you. It doesn't matter what's around you. Tell somebody, I've got power this morning. I, I can deal with what I'm facing. I can deal with what I'm going through. I, I've got the power. I've got the authority. I can use his name and demons tremble. I can walk in a room and people have to scatter. I can tell the bank to give me what belongs to me. Why? Because the power belongs. He says this and I'm done. He tells us verse number 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? And let me back up. Verse number 18, he's, he, he's saying, Paul is saying, I, just, I wish you knew, I wish you understood. I, I wish you could fathom in your mind. I wish, he says, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. That you would know first what is the calling, the hope of his calling. And the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word. Who believe according to the working of his mighty power. He says this, that which he wrought in Jesus Christ when he proved to us that he was our best friend. And raised him up from the dead with all power in his hand. 
and didn't just raise him up, but took somebody who shouldn't have gotten up ever again and set him far above all principalities, all powers, all might, all dominions, every name that is named, not only in this world and the world to come. Why? And he says he put all things under his feet. God help me this morning and gave him to be the head of the church over all the or rather gave him and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. What you tell me, Jerry, tell, tell somebody I'm his body. They're talking about me. Uh, if he's the head, then I'm his body. And the Bible says that when he got the power, he got uh, the power to be the head of the church and all things were under his feet. Uh, if he's the head and I'm the body, that means I'm the feet he's talking about. Tell somebody, it's under my feet. Y'all don't really believe it this morning. Tell somebody, it's under my feet. All the hell I'm going through, it's under my feet. All the suffering, it's under my feet. I, I've got the promise of Abraham. Every taste my foot touches, it belongs to me. Why? Because my father owns it and he gave it to me. Everywhere I walk, it's mine. Everywhere I move, I control it. I've got the power. I've got the authority. And I'm not just walking to somewhere, but I'm walking on some stuff. I'm walking on depression. I'm walking on sickness. I'm walking on disease. I'm walking on being broke. Stand up and walk with me. I'm walking on our sickness. I'm, I'm walking on my brokenness. I'm walking on being lonely. I've got the power. It's under my feet. Tell somebody it's under my feet. It's under my feet. I've got the authority to... I just want somebody to start walking around where you are and start calling out some stuff. Whatever you're dealing with, let the devil know it's under my feet. The pain, it's under my feet. The heartbreak, it's under my feet. The situations, they're under. It's under my feet. It's under my feet. He's talking about me, it's under. What is it that I can't step on? What is it that isn't under my control? What is it that I have to deal with? It's under my... I wish somebody would just stomp around. I'm glad I wore tennis shoes today. I wish somebody would just stomp around. Put some pep in your step. It's under your feet. And if you really know God and you really praise him, you won't just step on it, but you'll dance on it. You'll shout on it. It's under your feet, you'll get happy about it. You'll start to move. You'll start to jump. It's under my feet. Under my feet. It's under my feet. It's under my feet. is under my feet monkey pox it's under my feet whatever the devil tried it's under my feet There's one thing about being friends. Friends laugh together. Friends play together. Well, God is our friend and he's asking me, will you dance with me? Can you dance with me? Tell somebody, God is asking to dance with me. Dance over what I gave you. Dance over what's yours. 
dance over the promise. Dance over. It's under my feet. It's under my feet. Somebody, I am his friend. Tell somebody, he's my friend. He's my friend. And he gave me the power. And because I've got the power, it's under my feet. It's under my feet. It's under my feet. So walk tall, you got your friend with you. Don't get scared walking into the bank, walk tall, you got your friend with you. Don't get worried walking in the doctor's office, walk tall, you got your friend with you. You can walk into any of the devil's gang and not let your heart skip a beat. Why? Because I got my friend with me. And he gave me the power. He gave me the authority. Tell somebody it's all under my feet. It's all under my feet. I believe somebody danced all over the trouble that was waiting for you at home. Tell somebody I'm not worried about that. I put it under my feet. I believe somebody danced all over the drama that was waiting for them Monday morning at the office, but I'm not worried about that. It's under my feet. I believe somebody danced all over the heartbreak, the pain that keeps you up all night. Tell somebody I'm gonna sleep good tonight. I'ma lay down, it's under my feet, under my back, under my head. Tell somebody it's under me. I don't have to worry about it. Because I have the power. And it's under my feet. Everybody's standing. Just like somebody tell them, you have the victory. Your friend gave it to you. It's under your feet. It's under your feet, finance of the week. In your homes, it's under your feet. On your jobs, it's under your feet. I'm being redundant for a reason because someone still doesn't get it. It's under, which means I'm not looking it in the face. It's subject to me. Because God put it under my feet. The Lord is calling somebody this morning to salvation. If you're here and you're looking enemies in the face, you don't have to do that. God wants you to give you the power to put it under your feet. It's a very simple process. 
Your friend already did the hard work. He died on Calvary. He took care of that part. He said, all you need to do is trust me. And because I'm your friend, I'm going to tell you to turn away from this, the evil, the destruction. That's only going to kill you. That's only going to mess you up. Turn away from your, the sin. As your friend, I'm telling you, that's just going to end badly. He says, repent, turn around. Be baptized. Appropriate the blood that I shed for you. Apply that to your life. It'll cover all your sin. And the power that I got when I picked myself up from the dead, that's the power I want to give to you. Friends give friends gifts. And God is giving us the greatest gift. And that's the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you don't have to leave here today without it. You don't have to leave here today without it. Don't leave here today without it. Your friend wants to give it to you. Someone's here. <clears throat> you just need a reminder that God is with you. You can come. We're going to stand. We're going to pray. We're going to dismiss. But we're going to leave out of here like we know who our friend is. And we're going to walk out of here and walk tall and walk hard. Why? Because everything you walk on is under your feet. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for your long suffering. We thank you, God, for being our friend, even when we weren't friends to you. We thank you for the power that you won and gave to us. Help us to walk in your power. Help us to walk in your authority. Help us to live and walk worthy of your friendship. Got someone suffering this morning. Someone's going through. God, I'm asking that you be a deliverer, be a healer. God, someone's brokenhearted this morning. Someone feels like the world is crushing in on them. God, someone's trapped in their own mind. I'm asking that you be peace this morning. God, someone's lonely. They just, they just want someone to talk to. God, I'm asking God that you be what you are and be a friend. Lift us up. Give us the strength. You've already given us the strength. Help us to walk in the power. Help us to walk in the authority. Help us to walk knowing that as we walk, all things are under our feet. We trust you, God. Help us not to leave your presence, but to leave this place walking tall, stomping hard claiming back the territory from the devil that he tried to take from us and letting the world know around us that everything is under our feet. We trust you to do it and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Tell somebody it's under my feet. God bless you in Jesus' name.